Let's read the question. 6 gram of H2 gaseous and 35.5 gram Cl2 gaseous are heated in a vessel to react to form HCl. If final total pressure is 7 atm, then partial pressure of H2 gaseous and HCl gaseous in the final mixture respectively are. The options are 5 atm, 2 atm, the next is 2.5 atm and 1 atm and the next is 2 atm and 5 atm and the last option is 4 atm and 3 atm. So students, first of all, we need to understand the reaction between H2 and Cl2. I am writing it. H2 reacts with Cl2 to give HCl. Students, initially the number of moles of H2 given will be 3 moles as 6 grams of H2 is given and 35.5 gram of Cl2 is given that means 0.5 moles of Cl2. So, I am writing initial number of moles of H2 is 3 and that of Cl2 is 0.5 and that of HCl is 0. And at final level, Cl2 reacts with H2 and we have to analyze the left out number of moles of H2, Cl2 and HCl. So let's see how many moles of H2 and Cl2 are left. In this case, Cl2 is a limiting reagent as only 0.5 moles of Cl2 reacts with 3 moles of H2. So Cl2 is used up completely during the reaction and 0 moles of Cl2 will be left. And from 3 moles of H2, 2.5 moles of H2 will be left and 1 mole of HCl will be formed. Now we have to calculate the partial pressure of H2 and HCl in the mixture. So the formula of partial pressure, I am writing it, is mole fraction multiplied by total pressure. So students, let's calculate the partial pressure of H2, which is equal to mole fraction of H2 multiplied by total pressure. The value of total pressure is 7, which is already given in the question. And mole fraction of H2 is number of moles of H2, which is 2.5 upon total moles which is equals to 2.5 plus 1 that is 3.5 which ultimately equal to 5 atm let's calculate the partial pressure of hcl which is equals to mole fraction of hcl multiplied by total pressure we know the value of total pressure which is 7 atm multiplied by mole fraction of hcl which is 1 upon 3.5 which is equals to 2 atm that means the correct answer for this question is number 1. Moving to next question which is 72. If U RMS, U average and U most probable of a gas are equal at temperature T1, T2 and T3 respectively, then the correct order of the temperature is the options are T1 equals to T2 which is equals to T3. The next is T1 greater to T2 T2 is equals to T3. The next is T1 greater than T2 which is greater than T3. The next is T1 less than T2 which is less than T3. Students, for this question we need to understand the values of URMS, U average and U most probable. I am writing the formulas. U RMS is equals to under root of 3RT by M. U average is equals to under root of 8RT upon pi m and U most probable is equals to under root of 2RT upon m. So it is very clear that at same temperature the value of U RMS will be greater than U average which is ultimately greater than U most probable that is U MP. So student if URMS, U average and UMP of a gas are equal, in that case their temperature follows the reverse order of this order. So, we can say that the temperature T3 which is for most probable is greater than the temperature T2 which is for average which ultimately is greater than T1 which is for URMS. That means the correct option is option number 4. Moving to the next question, which is 73. If a gas expands adiabatically such that Tv raised to the power 1 upon 4 is constant, then the value of Cpm upon Cvm of the gas will be. The options are 3 upon 2, 5 upon 2, 5 upon 4 or 4 upon 3. Students, as we all know that for adiabatic 
प्रोसेस टी वी रेस टू दावर गामा माइनस वन इज कॉन्स्टेंट सो दैट मीन्स गामा माइनस वन इज इक्वल टू वन अपॉन फोर इज ऑलरेडी गिवन सो दैट मीन्स द वैल्यू ऑफ गामा इज वन अपॉन फोर प्लस वन विच इज इक्वल टू फाइव अपॉन फोर सो द वैल्यू ऑफ सी पी एम सी वी एम इज इक्वल टू फाइव upon 4 that means the correct answer for this question is option number 3 moving to next question which is 74 enthalpy change of combustion of toluene which is c7h8 liquid at 300 kelvin is minus 3910 kJ per mole the value of delta u for the combustion of one mole of toluene at 300 kelvin is the options are Minus seven eight one zero kilojoules. Next is minus three nine zero five kilojoules. The next is minus one nine five zero kilojoules, and the last is minus nine seventy five kilojoules. Students, first of all, we have to write the combustion reaction of toluene. I am writing it. C seven H eight, which is toluene, when reacts with O two, which is gas, it gives C O two, gaseous plus H2O liquid. In this case, four moles of water are produced, and seven moles of CO2 and nine moles of O2 is required. Students, now we need to recall the relation between delta H and delta U. I'm writing it: delta H is equals to delta U plus delta N G R T. We have to calculate delta U, so delta U becomes delta H minus delta N G R T. The value of delta H is given, which is minus three nine one zero kilojoules per mole. The value of delta N G will be seven minus nine. So I'm calculating it. Delta N G is equals to seven minus nine, which is equals to minus two. The value of R we are already aware, and the value of temperature is given, which is three hundred Kelvin. So let's put the values. Delta H is equals to minus three nine one zero kilojoules per mole minus Then the value of delta N G is minus two. Overall becomes plus two multiplied by the value of R is eight point three one four joules. We have to take it in kilojoules. So multiplied by ten to the power minus three kilojoules multiplied by temperature, which is three hundred, which gives a total of minus three nine zero five kilojoules per mole. that means the correct answer for this question is option number 2 moving to next question which is 75 select the correct statement among the following students in this question we are given with four statements and we have to identify that which among the following is a correct statement starting with first statement if a rigid closed system has adiabatic boundaries then it must be isolated student closed system represents no exchange of matter and adiabatic boundaries represents no exchange of heat yes this will be an isolated system because for isolated system exchange of neither heat nor matter is possible that means number 1 is the correct statement moving to number 2 entropy of a closed system is minimum at equilibrium students this is an incorrect statement as entropy of a closed system is maximum at equilibrium moving to next statement which is molar enthalpy is an extensive property this is again an incorrect statement as molar enthalpy is an intensive property we have already discussed intensive and extensive moving to next work done in a reversible adiabatic process is always zero plus this is an incorrect statement that means the correct answer for this question is option number 1 moving to next question which is 76 